Hi, I'm William and this is a quick video to introduce an f-stop timer. Uh, this is an open source software and hardware project that you can build yourself and this video is a very quick introduction to what it physically looks like, how it's connected and what its controls are and there'll be at the end a, a very simple explosion made with it. So first of all there's a screen at the top which is a red LCD that you'll see coming in a minute. There's a keypad for entering exposures and descriptions. There's a rotary encoder here which you can turn and press to make adjustments. And there are some connections at the front. So there's a socket here for connecting a light meter for metering under the base, metering your exposures under the baseboard. There's a socket for connecting a foot switch so that you can turn the timer on and off with your foot without having to reach, reach out to it. And there are three mains power connections. So at, front, at the bottom here there's uh, mains power in and there's two mains power outputs one for when the timer is off that's used to turn the safe light on and one for when the timer is on and that's connected to the enlarger and on the side there is a USB type B port which supplies power so I've got here a USB cable which is plugged into an iPhone charger and up it comes it says you know this is an f-stop timer and you can press any key to go to the main menu To demonstrate the timer, I'm using uh, a safe light, which you can see is currently on. There's some red light showing in the, in the video. And I've also got here uh, a bedside lamp, which is acting as an enlarger, instead of having to actually plug in an enlarger in this video. So what I'm going to do is show you, first of all, the main menu. And you can see here there are a number of menu options that say A, B, C, D. And of course, you select those menu options by pressing the matching letter keys on the right-hand side. The first thing you can do is press the star button and that enables focus mode which means it just turns on the enlarger. So in focus mode you can you know, move, move your enlarger up and down and attempt to focus your, your image. Uh, you can do your framing, cropping, zooming, all those sorts of things. As you can see here on the screen it says no sensor and that's because there's currently no light meter plugged into the timer. If there was it would be reading the light level at this point and we'll get into metering prints later. So pressing star again goes back to the main menu and the first thing we're going to do is look at the edit menu and that's where we edit the exposure. So we're going to press A and this is what it looks like when you want to define the exposure. So the first thing you can do is you can see that there it says plus two and that means that the exposure is two stops. Now the physical duration of the exposure is two to the power of stops. So in this case, 2 to the power of 2 would be 4 seconds. And what you can do to change that is, first of all, you can turn this rotor encoder and it will increase or decrease the exposure according to how far you turn it. So I can set it here to 3 stops and that's going to be an 8 second exposure because 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And to execute that exposure, you press the hash key. And the hash key generally means go to the execute menu or, or start executing. And here you can see it's compiled our exposure and said that the duration there is going to be 8.00 seconds. And at this stage, when we, you know, we want to do the final check of our print, focus, print and it's focusing, we can still go into focus menu and come back out. Or we can actually begin the exposure by pressing hash. And as you can see there, the enlarger comes on and the time starts counting down. Now at any point you can pause the exposure and then the time will remember and then resume it. And when it gets to zero, it says program complete and it resets back to the beginning. So that's about the simplest possible exposure you could do. Um, we're going to go back to the main menu by pressing C. So in general, C goes back up a level. So there's the main menu. A for the edit menu to change the exposure. The other way of changing the exposure is that you can directly type in the value that you want in stops. So press B. B generally means edit. Uh, and so we do that and just so we want 2.7 something stops so we can say 278 and that's 2.78 stops D will enter that and there we are and there's our specific exposure or we might want 4.52 and D for enter. Now uh, you very rarely want to enter numbers as precise and crazy as that uh, typically a quarter, an eighth of a stop or a quarter of a stop is more than enough precision unless your paper is very, very high contrast. 
and then of course we can go to the compile menu or the run menu and 4.52 stops well it's about four and a half stops so two to the, two to the power of four and a half is about 22 and we can begin that exposure or we can pause it the other thing you can do is you can press a to go back to the beginning of the program cancel it and start again the next step is to go to the io menu and this is what allows you so the b for io allows you to create a whole new program so if i press a it will clear the current program and give us a blank default one or we can uh, save the program to a particular stop so we'll say c and i'm going to slow save that to slot five for example press d for enter and the program has been saved to slot five um, that hasn't cleared the program as you can see it's still four and a half stops ish um, go back to the IO menu and now we can press B to load a program. So I'm going to load from slot 1 and it's loaded something and as you can see the first exposure says downloaded and it's 9 stops and there are other um, dodges and burnings occurring in that program. So it has loaded a program from EEPROM inside the timer. There is also a configuration menu so we press C for config at the main menu and there are a few simple things you can do here uh, you can just press B repeatedly to change the brightness of your LCD um, you can change the size of the rotary step so I had it set at a quarter of a stop but let's say I want a tenth of a stop so I'll press 1 0 so that's point 0.1 D to make the change and so now the rotary encoder step is point 0.1 stops and I can verify that by going to the edit menu and turning the encoder and seeing the exposure changes by 0.1 stop. Um, back in the configuration menu, uh, the, one of the interesting things is dry down, so D for dry down. Um, this is a dry down factor that will be applied to your programs when you enable it, and that allows you, when printing with fiber-based paper, to get the exposure approximately correct with by, by inspecting wet prints, and then uh, enable a dry down factor correction, and they'll come out correct when they're dried. So we're going to have 0.03 stops and that dry down factor has been applied. And we'll get back to how that, that occurs later. And that's all for the very simplest use case of the timer.